I mean, what do you think they'll do? Do you think they'll go for a quarterback in the draft, or do you think they would go for a holdover and then look for a quarterback next year? I think they'll sign someone. There are enough names out there that can play football. You're not going to win because of them, but I think there's enough guys that can play quarterback, and you'll let them compete with Tyler Huntley for the start. Do you have job. a couple of names? Yeah, I mean, I think um, – my top name for that situation would probably be, I mean, this is going to make eyes roll, but I think Carson Wentz, <laughs> um, T- Teddy Bridgewater, you know, guys that just, you know, do you want someone that can a little bit more volatile like Carson Wentz, where there is some good Teddy football on hand, there is a good arm, but it, uh, Teddy Bridgewater, you feel safer with yeah. him. But no matter what, I think those are the guys that you bring in to back up top. Well, well, here's, the thing, Tyler, wait, here's the thing, though, and, and I think this is important is we have a new offensive coordinator and they're not going to run the offense last year that suited Tyler Huntley. Right. So I think that if Lamar Jackson is gone and they do run Todd Monken's offense, which they're going to, I just, Tyler Huntley has got to go somewhere else. He's got to go somewhere where he can fit into that type of offense that maybe he yeah. follows Lamar Jackson wherever he is. And I just bring that up because I think if he's competing for a, a regular pro style type of quarterback spot, he has no chance. Right. Anyway, right. I just wanted to throw that in there. No, that that's a good thought. Um, and you know, who, who do you think is the best Todd mocking quarterback out there? I mean, tools wise, it's probably Carson Wentz. Could be because especially because he's younger than Bridgewater. So, yeah, you know, and if they think that something happened to Wentz at the end of the 21 season and then pretty much most of last season, and they can kind of get him back to where he was because he was even respectable the first half of the 21 season, something right. happened. So right. if Monken believes he could fix that temporarily, then, you know, yeah, because uh, this is still at least this year, you would think it's still going to be more of a running team and, and a tight right. end. Yeah first passing team so uh it's not going to be an overnight kind of switch but taking yep. a look at what baltimore uh will probably be looking at because they have a pick later in the first round so it's not really early um besides quarterback you, they got to replace bowers so we just talked about a cleveland ezra so you know unfortunately ben is another cleveland that uh might need to be you know, I don't think I don't know how happy they'd they'd be with Ben Cleveland starting a left guard. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised he was one of the surprises to me in 2021 where they took him. I, I had him as a, a late day three pick because of just how stiff he is as a mover. And the Ravens have made a lot of picks like this, right? I mean, the tackle they have, the Fiale from Minnesota, um, Orlando Brown, some of the previous guys, uh, David Sharp from Florida back in the day. They draft size and strength and power, and that is what Ben Cleveland brings to the table. Um, he makes grown men look small in the NFL. He's a, he's a massive body, but to say that there's no backup option behind him right now is, I mean, you're playing with fire. I know Patrick McCarry could play there. John Simpson could play there, but you know, you need more depth on that line, even if Ben Cleveland works out, but you, yeah, you got to admit that if the team is going to be reliant on a second tier, third tier quarterback and a running game, they need to be much better than where they are right now at left guard. And I think they might be another team to trade down early, even if it's just a couple of spots, because they don't have a second-round draft pick. Mm -hmm. So they would be only looking at a late first, and then they don't draft again until the third. So um, that could be tricky, especially if you are looking to upgrade a guard. Not that you can't also do that through free agency uh, as a a kind of Band-Aid deal. But also yep. um, at wide at uh, offense, we have to keep in mind the wide receiver position. They get Bateman back, hopefully. Uh, they brought in Aguilar. He's just a Band-Aid as well. So they don't have mm-hmm. good depth either. They're still looking for at least one more impact wide receiver. And uh, I think Tony Lombardi, who covers the Ravens um, on this network, was the one that brought this up that, Hey, Todd Monken's the offensive coordinator. What about a trade for Mike Evans? Okay. You know, I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. Tampa Bay could unload them. Tampa Bay is, we talked about Tampa Bay uh, yesterday. You know, they're looking for a whole lot of 
pieces, especially on the offensive line. So they need some additional maybe draft capital. Um, Not a bad move. I mean, what do you give up for him? That's a good that question. That's the thing. Yeah. I don't know whether – because you can't give up – you're not giving up a first-round pick this year. I don't th- – right. you know, Evans has been an incredible, durable – he is – I don't know if people realize that this guy has never had a season less than 1,000 yards. Almost on her yes. first ballot hall. Of, he's a first ballot hall of famer, and he doesn't get enough. Publicity. No, he does I, not. I so that's the reason. So, but I will say this: if he's, I don't know how many years he has left, but if they feel he's got four or five more years left, three at prime level, maybe you do have to give up a first round draft pick. Because you talked about giving up potentially a late first rounder for Hopkins. Heck, I'd yep. rather have Evans. Yeah, which, just as much as as Hopkins. So I'm putting them on the yeah. same level at this stage of their career. Um, so maybe that is possible, but anyway, I just th- figured I'd throw that in there, uh, because yep. they need a receiver, but on defense, you know what? I think it's pretty much an open, I think there's just some possibilities. I mean, yeah, I think they can upgrade a little bit uh, on the defensive line, uh, cause they don't have a true number one guy. You know, they didn't have that, you know, man, they don't have the man up front. Uh, they can maybe use another edge depth guy. Um, and they do have to replace a couple of their corners, uh, which might be their number one need overall. You can't have enough corners. And right now, I think once you get past Marlon Humphrey, there's a lot more kind of question marks than anything else. Yeah, you're going to have a competition between uh, Jalen Armour Davis. Uh, I think it was a fourth rounder from last year and Brandon Stevens. We've seen him play for two years. He's not good. He's not bad. Like, you know, he just to quote you. He's just another guy. Um, six penalties in a part-time role last year. You know, to do that in your second year in the league, that's a red flag to me. Uh, no pun intended, but Armour Davis is a guy that I had a day too great on him last year. I thought they had a good good value there. Got his feet wet, but it was only he was on the field for 32 covered snaps last year. So you just don't know yep. yet. You don't have enough uh, tape on him to really evaluate. So throwing him out there or him being your plan A or even your plan B is a tremendous risk. And this is a team that had pumped a lot of resources. They understand the value of a corner. Yes. And you know, if you ask me. You know, if one of these top four or five corners, if they slip to that number 23 spot, I think that's where the, the direction they're going to go. There you in. go. And I loved, I mean, they had, I mean, the trade to acquire Roquan Smith was genius. Uh, you know, I know it wasn't going to happen for my team, uh, but I, I was, I, I, I would, I would, I was just, ho- I knew he was on the block and I was praying that the Jets would make a move to get him, but, you know, <laughs> they got Mosley and they're going to, they're going to, they're not moving on from him. Uh, but yeah. what a great deal that was uh, for Baltimore. Yeah, they're, they're, they're strong. They're pretty strong up front. I'm a big, I'm a big uh, Justin Matabuke fan. I think that he is going to be the dude this year. I think you're going to see you him. Get, he so he'll break out. Year. I think he could be the man. You know, he started to break out already. I think he's going to be the big guy up there. And I love Travis Jones. Yes, the Travis pick, Jones. Though. Yes. The front, the front, I feel pretty good about. Um, could they use more depth? Everyone could. Yeah. But you know, you get David. You get David Ojabo back this year, coming back from his Achilles. Um, that uh, you know, you never want to forget about that. So, but the back end is, is shaky, and it's it's a surprising situation that it, they're so shaky back there because they've always valued the secondary highly. So uh, that that's probably if they're going to ignore offense in round one, I believe that's where they go round and uh, with that first. Pick. Yeah. Um, good reminder too about Ojabo because look, away uh, 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 has not developed yet and so Mm -hmm. if you haven't yet seen these guys develop either one of them and you're relying on tyus bowser to be your veteran number one edge rusher at this point let's remember the baltimore ravens the great defenses they had a lot of it had to do with they had that those edge rushers they had that those guys that can just you know control your line of scrimmage create chaos and It was a combination of things because they always had that really good interior linebacker as well. Uh, They had that, uh, uh, you know, that incredibly strong up front unit. And um, and then, of course, they would have someone uh, like Ed Reed in this in uh, in the secondary. But I think what I always remember more than anything about that defense is how much pressure they were able to get from the outside. And they just don't have that yet. So, but, right. but they're not going to get it necessarily. They don't have to maybe early. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Third round, four, fourth round area, and you're looking for some uh, diamonds in the rough edge rushers. Who are you looking at? 
Derek Hall from Auburn, I think, fits the bill there. Yaya Diaby from Louisville, he sets the edge like a 4-3 defensive end, which they like. They like to kind of have one speed guy, one power guy. Isaiah Foskey from Notre Dame is a good fit. Um, if the kid, I don't know if he's going to fall. I personally have a second-round grade on Tui uh, Pelotu from USC. But his size profile, if you look at where guys in his profile get drafted um, with length and speed concerns, he could be a third-round pick. And I think he fits that situation like a glove. Um, so it's, I think one of those three guys would be good – one of those four guys, sorry, would be good picks there.